Let's get us on book. Turn to page number 227. Saved by the blood. 227. Saved by the blood of the crucified one. Now ransomed from sin and a new work begun sing praise to the father and praise to the son say by the blood of the crucified one save save my sins all pardon my guilt is all gone save save i'm saved of the crucified one saved by the blood of the crucified one the angels rejoicing cause it is done a child of the Father, joint heirs with the Son, saved by the blood of the crucified one. Save, save my sins, all are pardoned, my guilt is all gone. Save, save, I'm saved by the blood of the crucified one. Saved by the blood of the crucified one. The Father, he spake, and his will it was done. Great price of my pardon, his own precious son. Say by the blood, <coughs> crucified one. Save, save my sins, all of pardon, my guilt is all gone. Save, save, save by the blood of the crucified one. Save by the blood of the crucified one. All hail to the Father, hail to the Son. All hail to the Spirit, the great three in one. Say by the blood of the crucified one. Save, save my sins, all apart, and my guilt is all gone. Save, save, I'm saved by the blood of the crucified one. All right, if you would open your uh, prayer bulletin this evening. If you look on there, we... Uh, uh, have some folks on there. Do we have? Oh, we, of course, we have uh, Brother Lee, have Miss Frankie, uh, Dusty, uh, Patty Bailey, Mrs. Weatherly, uh, Brother Priest, Alicia Delion, Tiffany Schaefer, and then of course on the other side we have our land sale, our mortgage. Uh, any unspoken this evening, right? Uh, of course, our weekly services the ministries, and the government and military. Do we have any prayer requests here on the right? Who? 
Oh, Miss Frankie, shots on the 22nd. And then Dusty's going to have surgery. You can say hernia. Okay. Uh, anyone else here on the right? How about the middle left? The far left? All right, any others this evening? All right. Uh, let's go to the uh, Lord in prayer, all right? Father, as we gather this evening, uh, we're thankful, Lord, that we're able to gather together. Lord, I know there's still some states out there that are uh, not letting churches to assemble, Lord, and we're thankful that uh, we were able to. Uh, Lord, and we have some folks here we'd like to lift up, Lord. Of course, Brother Lee, Lord, with his health and going to dialysis in his heart. Uh, Lord, uh, Miss Frankie, Lord, and the shots coming up on the 22nd. Lord, we ask that you would be able to, her body would be able to uh, uh, be helped by the shots, Lord, and uh, Lord, that it's able to get her where she can move around a little bit better. Lord, and maybe eventually after all this mess is over, Lord, she'll be able to come right back to church. And Dusty, Lord, on his hernia, a uh, surgery for his hernia, we ask that you would uh, guide and direct him and those doctors as they are doing that. Uh, Father, uh, Miss Patty, Lord, with the angiogram tomorrow, Lord, we just pray that and ask you that uh, uh, everything would go well with that, Lord, and they'd be able to get uh, good circulation in the leg, uh, Father, and not only that, Lord, but these doctors and nurses make good decisions on allowing these wounds to heal, Father, and uh, not allowing uh, uh, gangrene or anything to set in, Father. Uh, Mrs. Weatherly, Lord, with her heart and uh, the stress with uh, Miss Patty and the hospital, Lord, we just ask that you would help her, uh, guide and direct her, Lord. And well, we know she's trusting you and has, uh, has peace, Lord, because you're in control, Father, but there's still... Uh, or we do still get a little bit of anxiety, Lord, when uh, things happen. Father, of course, Brother Priest, as he uh, recovers, Lord, and uh, Alicia Delion, Lord, with her recovery, Miss Tiffany, uh, Lord, and uh, uh, Lord, uh, Heather, Lord, as uh, she is get, going to the emergency room, Lord, we ask that you would uh, help uh, her, Lord, help her blood uh, pressure to calm down, Lord, uh, that uh, they may figure out what's going on with her. Uh, Lord, uh, Lord, we lift up our uh, land cell to you, Lord. We ask that you would hasten that, Lord, that you would bring that uh, about. Father, we're still trusting you on it and still waiting uh, for you to move, Lord. And also our mortgage, we ask that you would help us to be faithful to pay our mortgage, our electric bill and all those things, Lord, that we need to make, we need to pay. Uh, Lord, those that raise your hand for unspoken, uh, Lord, you know, uh, while they raise their hand, we just ask that you'd meet their needs, Father. And our weekly services, Lord, as we have been getting back together, Lord, for the last few uh, couple weeks, uh, last two or three weeks, Lord, we just ask that you'd help us to be faithful, Lord, as we come back. Though we're having to spread out in the auditorium, Lord, we're still able to have a service. We just ask that you would uh, make sure that uh, help us to be faithful, Lord, and uh, Lord, we, we would do everything we need to to stay safe, Lord, and uh, Lord, the ministries, Lord, I pray as we uh, get are you going this week, Father, that uh, you would help us, Lord, to spread the word and let folks know, Lord, that uh, there's still hope in Baytown for drugs and alcohol, Lord, and that, uh, Lord, we have the answer, Lord, we will always point back to you, Father, and our government, military, Lord, we're thankful for our, our military, Lord, that they are protecting our freedoms, or we lift up our government to, to you, Lord, and uh, uh, that they would look to you for wisdom and not their political party, Lord, uh, nor uh, the 
the humanism, Lord, that they are that is so ingrained into our uh, modern government and, uh, and politics, Father. We just ask that uh, you would uh, have mercy and grace upon us, or as a nation, help us as a church, Lord, to uh, show our country, Lord, we have the the correct answer, Lord, to all of life's problems, Lord, and or so we can point them back to you, or not point them at a church or some uh, religion or uh, anything like that, Father, but we can point them back, uh, Lord, to the author, Lord, and the finisher of our faith, Lord, and we just thank you for everything that you're going to do, Lord, and we just lift all these things up and uh, ask all this in Christ's name, amen. Turn to page number 143. Blessed assurance, 143. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste, glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Red washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending bring from above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long perfect submission all is at rest i and my savior am happy and blessed watching and waiting looking above filled with his goodness lost in his love this is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. try to get in here and get going as fast as I can. My wife has stew on the on the crock pot. And I haven't ate since 10:30 this morning except for a couple of candies that Ronnie gave me. So one of the good thing about having a baker at the house, they always have something sweet around. And so but uh uh we are in uh, Proverbs chapter 16 this evening. Proverbs 16 as we continue our study in the book of Proverbs. And once you found your place in Proverbs, I invite you to stand in honor of reading God's word. Proverbs 16. Proverbs chapter 16. We're going to begin... In verse 16 this evening, Proverbs 16, 16. Here, uh, Solomon is teaching his son here. He says this, How much better is it to get wisdom than gold? 
and to get understanding rather than uh, be chosen or rather to be chosen than silver. So how much better is it to get wisdom than gold and to get understanding rather to be rather to be chosen than silver? The highway of the upright is to depart from evil. He that keepeth his way preserveth his soul. Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. Better is it to be of an humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. Father, as we are to the preaching and the teaching part of the service, Father, once again, I ask that you would empty me of myself. Father, that you would cleanse me of my sin, and that you would fill me with thine Holy Ghost, that I may preach, thus saith the word of the Lord. Father, I ask that you would help us this evening. Help me, Lord, to preach the thought here that Solomon wrote that you inspired, Lord, to convey it, Lord, to your people here, Lord, that we may make good spiritual decisions, Lord, and apply it to our life. Father, we just ask all these things in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you. you may be seated. And so, I want to speak to you tonight on the subject of staying on God's highway. Staying on God's highway. And, you know, in the book of Proverbs, it always talks about the good, you know, good versus evil type things and righteousness versus unrighteousness. And we've talked about being on the road and traveling uh, down the road before uh, in this series. But uh, as you can see, when it talks about the highway of the upright, it's kind of where I've got the, uh, the title here because uh, we're going to be spending a lot of time on verse 17. We're going to be also be in the rest of the verses, but the majority of the message is going to be in verse 17. And, you know, staying on God's highway. And so uh, I would say most people here uh, that come to church, especially on a Wednesday night, you know, uh, they have an idea, you have an idea where you want to be spiritually. You may not you, you may not be able to put a physical you might not be able to see it in front of you like a, a physical person, but you have an idea the things you want to work on and where you want to be uh, spiritually. And and to do that, we need to stay on God's highway, don't we? We need to stay on His highway. Uh, and so Solomon here, Solomon here is writing his son. He said, "What he's saying here, and what we need to begin with is, he's telling his son, pursue wisdom rather than wealth." And I think Solomon can speak from experience here, can he? When God came to him and said, "What do you want?" Didn't he? You want wealth? You want victory over your enemies? What do you want? As an eight-year-old boy, what did, that, what did Solomon say? Wisdom. He wanted to know how to govern. He wanted wisdom to govern his people. Right? And so Solomon can, has an idea. Even though he was the wisest person that ever lived, he was very foolish. Right? And so uh, he can speak to, saying, to how precious wisdom is. Right? And he says, pursue Wisdom rather than wealth. As, as he says, 18, is how much better is it to get wisdom than gold? You know, if I could do one thing, if I could say, pass something on to teenagers and young adults, it would be this, pursue God not wealth. If I could ingrain into Bentley, Sarah, Sarah, Techie, every single per, every single teenager that has passed through, and, I, and when we had the school, I tried my best to, you know, teach that to pursue God, to to pursue that relationship with God, and have a dynamic relationship with Him rather than pursuing wealth, because. Let's just be honest. We're happier when we, have, when we pursue God rather than wealth. 
And I know all the cliches. Wealth makes you happy because wealth uh, buys tacos. I've heard that, you know. I've heard, you know, wealth makes you happy because wealth can make you can buy your fishing equipment and you can go out fishing all the time. I've heard all the little cliches about wealth. But listen, so, uh, Solomon here says pursue wisdom rather than wealth because I can guarantee you there's been a lot of athletes that were on a highway headed to success. I mean, you hear them every year, the, the NFL draft. Let's just bring it up. I mean, they're always, they are from, well, what is it, February after the end of the Super Bowl all the way till May when they're, that's all they talk about is the draft. All these young athletes coming out of college, who's the best one, who has the best skills, who has the best intangibles, and listen, they always have these, uh, these athletes on a high trajectory. They're, I mean, they're, they said they're going to go places, they're going to go to this team or that team, and they're going to be able to propel them. Then what do we hear? Drugs, alcohol, beating their, their girlfriends or beating their wives. And what happens? They made a detour. They made an exit off that highway that they didn't intend to. And when they when they began that uh, that on that highway, on that road where they were going, that exit wasn't there, was it? But listen, pursue wisdom, pursue God rather than pursuing wealth. Solomon says, but. Uh, because it, it, it's it's more des it's more desirable, wealth can uh, wealth can get you and take you far. But will it will it will come up short in the issues of life? Sam Walton, the richest man in the world, one time at one point, had, you know he died of cancer. He went worldwide looking for a cure, spending his millions and millions of dollars. Still couldn't find it. Still couldn't live a day longer. Isn't wealth can being rich, becoming a professional athlete, or having all kinds of money? It, it, it could do you. It'll do all right for a little while. But let me tell you, wealth's not going to help you with your marriage. Wealth ain't going. It's not going to help you when making these life decisions. Wealth's not going to help you when you become addicted to drugs. Or alcohol, or pornography, or when you get addicted to sin. Wealth's not going to help you make that decision. All, well, you know what? Really, what wealth's going to do? It's going to push you further down that down that road. I mean, it's going to make sin more accessible to you. And so Solomon here is saying, pursue wisdom rather than wealth. You see, and he also says here, you know, about show. Uh, and get understanding rather to be chosen than silver. You'll choose understanding rather than silver. Listen, silver tarnishes over years. And it never looks good. Looks as good as it did when it was first come out of the mill. When they poured it out of that pot and it started to, to make form, whatever form they put it, it never looks as good as it did then. Right? And so, listen, it will tarnish, but... What's better? Let me ask you. We got some people who work here. A lot of us work a lot of overtime sometimes, don't we? Let me ask you. Let me ask you. So I'm going to ask you a personal question, Roy. What's better, overtime pay or taking Techie, Sarah, and Eva soul winning? That's the good answer. That's the right answer. I thought you might be able to make that right answer. So, no, no, no. Listen, we have to. These, this, this is a real life decision because we know that overtime is going to be there a lot of the times. Even at Walmart, they'll say no overtime. Then at the end of the week, you can stay an hour. You can stay. You know, you want to come in on your day off. And then, and then, and then this is the, this is what we have to wisdom. Overtime. And so as we're traveling down this highway with our family, these billboards pop up all the time. Overtime. Man, if I work this overtime, I'll be able to 
And so what do we do? We just... What's more important? Really, what's more important? Overtime? Or teaching your kids how to have a relationship with Christ? Can't, you can't teach them how to have that relationship when you're at work. You can't, you, you can't instill them into them uh, the, the Christian heritage you want to instill them when you're off working for somebody. Uh, I know we have to work. I get it. I get it. And I know there's going to be times that, listen, work needs us. And we're going to have to sacrifice every once in a while. But it can't be an every week thing, people. It can't be an everyday thing. Well, I've got to work over because, well, my boss, no, no. Listen, as I tell people when I, when, I, when I work on them, I said, there has to be a line where you cut it off. I, I tell these department managers all the time, I said, listen, one more is going to want this from you, right? But you're going to have to make a decision. This is how far I go. This is how far I go because, listen, the dollar is not worth losing your marriage. The dollar is not worth losing your kids. It's not. Well, I ask people, well, you've got to have a job. I know. Listen, if I, and if, it's, if I leave that job for the right reasons, God's going to open me a better door. I just got to trust him. And I've done it. And, and I'm not saying that it's, you know, it's real easy. It's not. it's not. It's not easy not getting a paycheck for two or three months. But trusting God is worth it. And so uh, you've got to see is, do you do you want understanding? Do you want wisdom? Or do you want overtime pay? Let's just go to the Old Testament. There are too many kings in the Old Testament that was more concerned about building their kingdom than they were their sons. And what happened to those sons? They took Israel further away from God than their father. So listen, I mean, we have to make a decision. Do I want a really nice house? Do I really want to, uh, do I really want, uh, you know, this expensive vehicle? Or do I want to invest in my kids? When they leave the household, are they, you know, do, do I want them to stay in church or do I want them to leave? Listen, teenagers are leaving the church in rapid rates. I can ask Jason right now, almost every single teenager we had in LBA, some of the ones that he went to school with, aren't in church today. Is it LBA's fault? No. We preached the word. We preached here. In chapel, you know, they, uh, they got something. And I know when I taught, they really got something. When it comes to the Word of God, listen, we, we tried to teach the, uh, you know, what, what are they going to do? What do, you, what do you want your children to have? Wisdom, understanding, or how to make money? I remember a question asked, I was asked a question this a long time ago. Why do you want to go and be a preacher? You're not ever going to have anything. That's what they said to me. And I'm like, not here. I may not have. Listen, I'm 41 years old. I don't own a house. In the ministry, I may never own a house. But I've got a mansion in heaven. No, no, no. You can say amen. That's great. But listen. That was my thinking. That's my thinking now. Yes, I'd love to have a house of my own. It's the American dream, right? To own a house. But listen, what's more important to me? The ministry of God, God's ministry? Or my own, my own selfish ambition? I have to make that choice. We have to make that choice and going on, you know, traveling down God's highway here that we have the, that he's given us of this life. We're going to have exits. Bucky's. Right? What's that old smokehouse off of I-10 further, on, further down than Bucky's? It's, it's a, there's a shell station, all kinds of smoke meat. I don't remember the name of it. 
But, I mean, there's going to be these exits that are appetizing. Oh, look at that. Man, a, not a 2020 Ferrari. Only yours for 50, pay, uh, 50 years of, of $599.99 a month. No, there, there's going to be these exits that Satan's going, look at me! Look what I got! Look what I got over here! And... And you, we as believers, we can't, oh, we can't do that. And so Solomon says, what's more important? He's asking us, what's more important? Wisdom, gold. Understanding, silver. Dads, you need to take note. But listen. Listen. Maybe you've allowed all this over time through when your kids were small. Listen, you got teenagers. It's still not too late. Still not too late. So Solomon says, pursue wisdom rather than wealth and stay, number two, stay on the Lord's highway. Verse 17 says, the highway of the upright is to depart from evil. If you and I exit God's highway, we're going to corrupt the road that God had planned for us. He says, I want you here. This, we can't see it, right? You know, we don't, we, you know, yes, we have the Holy Spirit. Yes, we have the Bible. But unlike here, we can't see where God's taking us a little further down the road in life. You know, GPS, we can see the end, the end road. But if, as we're traveling, God says, this is where I'm trying to get you. You can't see it yet. The blessings I have are right here for you. You can't see it yet, but... You gotta trust me. And if you and I deviate, we see these signs, these billboards that Satan has put up on this road, and we, we get we, we take our focus off the road. Listen, what happens when you usually it's just like Peter, when you take your eyes off what's your focus, what do you do? Car goes one way or the other. And if we take our focus off of what God, you know, following God, re trying to get that to that destination, we're all I'm not saying we're not gonna we're going to go to hell because we're not folks. No, we're bought by the blood. We're saved. That, that, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about there's a blessing here. There's a spiritual uh, 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 maturity that where God is trying to get us to. And if we take our eyes off what God has planned for us in the future or down a little bit down the road and we take these exits, you won't get there. You say, well, well, eventually, well, well, maybe, maybe if you wise up, I still got friends that were that well went to college with that took a detour. They still hadn't found their way back on the road. Guy I know, Scott Yontz is what his name was. Guy had little short, stubby fingers, but could, man, he could play that piano like nobody's business. So you don't get the excuse I have short, stubby fingers. He was shorter than I am. And he could play after his sophomore year. He decided to take an exit. Two years later, I see him. He visited the church once. Total 180. Black hair, black clothes. Didn't even stay for the whole service. Now, yeah, you might take this exit and say, you know what, I want to try this out. You know what? Nobody knows about it. I'm, I'm, I'm on this road by myself. I don't have a wife yet. You might be saying, I don't have a wife. I don't have a husband. He said, but Techie could be saying, you see that guy? He's fine. 
Oh, what's the new link? He's lit. And so Tacky could be going, hmm. And he could be saying, what's up? You know? Because Brother Roy's not going to be always with her. Right? When she goes to college. If she's smart enough to go to college, when she goes to college, he's not going to be able to be there. There's this guy going to be, and give her all the attention she wants. If she's going to have to make a decision. Am I going to take this exit and try this out? Or do I want to stay on God's road? And so she's going to have to make a decision. Bentley, he'll have to make that same decision. He's going to go off and about. He won't, you know, as much as of a, of a leash that Miss Tiffany wants to put on him, you know, or eventually he's going to not be around her or around Stefan. And there's just going to be this girl that's got daddy issues that dresses scantily and then finish you go. No, no, this is a, these are exits off of God's road. You, you, we can laugh, but, but let's just be honest. This is stuff that we deal with every day that these two are going to deal with. And these are going to, you know, they, they, these choices, might, they might be a year, two, three years down the road. We don't know. But God's saying, stay. And this is what Solomon is, is saying here uh, in verse 17. Listen, he, he says, the highway of the upright is to what? What's that word? Depart from evil. So he, he said, exiting God's highway will corrupt our road. Stay on the highway of the upright and don't exit off into Sin City. You know, when we talk about highways in the Old Testament and when, 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 the, when they had their highways, they're not like our highways where they go through the heart of the cities. These highways stayed, stayed outside the cities. In order for you... Somebody, when they were traveling down the road, down those highways, wherever they were going, they would have to exit off, walk off with their, ho with their horse or whatever, and exit off to go into Jerusalem or to go into a city. And so they would have to make these exits to go and visit these cities. And so he's saying, don't exit off. Don't exit off these highways that, the, uh, off, the, off the highway that God has for you. Because doing so will cause us problems. Like I said here, most folks that are here are either le you know, listening on Facebook. You're on the right road. You're in, you're in church, or at least you seem to be on the right road. You're here. Pretty, you, know, you try to be here pretty faithfully. At least I hope you try to be. You make it a priority to be in church. But I would say for the most people who can't be here, who is watching on Facebook, and that are here, you're on, the, you're on the right road, or at least you seem to be on the right road, or you seem that you have the desire to be on the right road. And you're not giving excuses because you're here. Listen, Facebook's never an excuse to miss church. But you, you seem to be on the right road, or maybe you're here in church because you're expected to be here, or because mom or dad told you you had to be here, or uh, and maybe you're here, but you're really not. You come to church, but you're more on your phone than you are listening to the, to the message, or you're here because your mom and dad make you to be here, and you're just drawing on a piece of paper waiting for the message to be over. And if you're here and you've exited the highway of the upright, just 
uh, just a little way. Just uh, Listen, if you've exited, there's just a little ways to turn around. You can, listen, you can turn around and come right back on. You can make a U-turn and say, you know what? I, this week I got off. I need to turn around and get back on. That's the great thing about our God is he is a God of second, third, fourth, hundred, fifty, million chances. If you've gotten off just a little bit, or even if you've gotten off a lot, you have a GPS to get you back on there. You do. Maybe you're not on the highway of the upright, but the billboards are getting your attention, and you're, you've exited. Or you're on the highway, and these exits, these billboards that Satan has thrown up, and you see one that you like, and you're about to exit. Don't get distracted by the billboard. You know the thing about billboards? They never show you what's on the other side. They never do. You see the good, colorful picture, but you don't ever see what's on the other side of that. They don't, they don't show you the, the brokenness, uh, the, that broken man or woman who uh, took off the exit and decided they wanted to try pot. They wind up doing heroin. And, and now they're out there on the street. They don't show you the... They don't show you the back side of the billboard of those websites or those videos. They, don't, they just show you, look at this. They don't show you the back side of that billboard where you can't hold a, you can't, you, you can't hold a marriage together because... You're off doing this instead of being with your family. You're off spending your, your the money you make at work on this. And not if you could keep that away from your work, usually if you're hooked on that, you take that with to work with you. You don't ever see the back of that billboard where it, in, where it in, where people end up. Don't get distracted by it. Because staying on this highway will preserve your soul. It will. That's what he says. The highway of the upright is to depart from evil. He that keepeth his way preserveth his soul. If you keep the way on that highway, it will preserve your soul. Staying between the guardrails. Let me tell you, as I was driving on Beltway 8 today, I do it every day since I've started uh, over at the other store. As I, there's that big bridge going over, coming from Beltway to from between 45 and IT, and there's a big bridge there for the channel. And as I was going over that bridge, I kind of peeked over, and I kind of got a little anxiety. I said, man... The only thing that's keeping me from going off in that water is this little bitty cement, cement wall. That's all that's keeping me over from peril. And in life, on this road, God has those guardrails on each side, just like they have on I-10, Beltway, whatever you want to call it. There's these guardrails, and they're not just so... You can't, so you don't get to see what's off on there or off on that side. There in those guardrails are there to keep you safe. And that's why he has them. Listen, there's freedom when we are inside those guardrails. It's when we get outside those guardrails where everything gets chaotic. It's where everything gets, our life starts getting screwed up because we're making poor decision after poor decision after poor decision because... Well, we thought we could do a better job. And you know what pride does? Let me tell you what pride does, teenagers. Pride will tell you, that happened to you, it won't happen to me. Pride will say, just because you got caught, don't mean I'm going to get caught. Oh, yeah. 
You may be getting away with it right now. But let me tell you, God will see to it that it catches up to you. Oh yeah, He will. But it's not, you might say, well, it's not right now. Well, sin is pleasurable for a season. For some of you, you can go in and out of that, that cell pretty freely right now. You're young. You say, I, I don't have a problem. I can, go, I can step into this sin and get out. Nobody ever know any no problem about it. I can step in. I can do this. I can do that. Nobody, Mom and Dad don't know anything about it. They probably do, but you may think that they don't. And Let's just say, for instance, they don't. You're going in and out, and you're able to you go, you know, move freely, then one day, wham! It's shut, and you're stuck. And you're going to be like, how did I get here? And, we'll be, and God will be able to trace it all the way back to when your pastor was trying to get a hold of your heart. And say, if you don't listen to your preacher, you don't listen to me, when he is preaching my word, if you, then this wouldn't have happened. You could have stayed between those guardrails and on my road. And instead of here, you would be here. Instead of being over here, no family, outcast because family doesn't want to have anything to do with you because you're, you steal, you cheat, you're on drugs, you're on alcohol, you're hooked on this, you're hooked on that. Instead, you're, instead of being here, you're over here in the ditch. Why? Because you took this exit. And the reason you took that exit is because pride. Pride did it to you. Because what does verse 18 say? Let's read verse 18 together. Pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Where's that fall? Over here. That's where that fall is. And here, the only way you get out, you, 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 some of you may have even taken that exit and you're headed that away, but let me tell you the the way to get out of it is verse 19. Better it is to be of an humble spirit with a lowly. Right? Than to divide the spoil with the proud. It's better to be have that humble of the spirit. Better it is to be of an humble spirit with a lowly. Better to be of a to be humble in the lowly here at church and on the high, on God's highway than in the ditch trying to share spoils with the proud. There are no spoils when you're in that ditch. You think there's spoils. You think that you're maybe having fun, but you're not. The way to get back is to humble yourself. Think about the, the son, the prodigal son. He thought he could go out and take those riches and do whatever he wanted. And when the riches went out, his friends went out, he had to humble himself. Come back. And just as the dad did, just as the dad saw him coming, God sees you. Listen, if you're thinking about exiting, you're thinking about this big, if I can't wait till I get out of my mom and dad's house because I'm going to do what I want, proud, pride, you'll be in that ditch. I want to be in control of my own life. Get you in the ditch. Guaranteed. If you don't think so, Give me a piece of paper. I'll sign my name and date it. 
And when you're in the ditch, you can bring it back to me and say, remember this day I told you. But you know what we'll do? Come on. What are you all about? What, what do you think church is? It's a small group for a bunch of wicked sinners getting help from the source of life. So, if you think that exit's all hunky-dory and it's good to go, none of us can stop you. Not a one of us in this room can stop you. God can. And I hope His love has got a hold of you to where you see that exit and you just pass by it. And you just keep going straight. Miss the exit. Just keep going. So you can get here instead of here. Father, as we conclude this evening, Lord, I want to thank you for your word, what you have for us. Father, I lift up every single person here. Lord, every single day we pass billboards. We pass spiritual billboards, Lord, that, is, that Satan has put up to try to divert our spiritual life. Lord, and he is making them as big and as pretty and shiny as he can to get our attention, to get us to exit off of your highway. Father, I pray for each and every single individual here, including myself. Father, help us to stay focused on driving on your highway and not exiting to get into the ditch. Lord, I pray that you would show yourself mighty to every single person here, Lord, that Satan is enticing. Lord, he's got these wiles, these tricks that he's laid out to cause, to ensnare us. Lord, but may we see how real you are and how much you love us and that we would stay focused. Father, I pray for those watching live stream and here tonight, Lord, if there's someone or they're watching and they're not sure that if they were to die today, heaven would be their home. Lord, I pray that they would reach out to us, not their own watching, that they'd contact us, they'd message us, Lord, so we could talk to them and introduce, uh, introduce them to you. Or so that they could trust in what you did on the cross. Or if there's someone here, or maybe they did, I pray that you'd give them the confidence to stand up and come forward in a moment and let me know that they're not sure if heaven would be their home, or that or we could get it settled today. Or it would be an awful thing for someone to, that they're not sure, they know that they're not going to heaven that it would be an awful thing for them to leave church today and wind up not being here tomorrow and spending forever or in hell paying for the penalty of their sin Lord I pray this evening that you have spoken to your people through the preaching of your word now Lord I pray that they will respond Lord I ask all these things in Christ's name Amen let's stand as a music